This recording will provide an overview of the support available to help employers claim statutory sick pay SSP costs, given the economic impact of coronavirus, also known as COVID-19. The Chancellor has announced a statutory sick pay SSP rebate to support small and medium-sized employers with additional SSP costs due to coronavirus COVID-19 for up to two weeks for each employee. Today we will be looking at the aims of the scheme, who can claim, when to start paying SSP, employees you can claim for, what you can claim, making a claim, connected companies or charities and keeping records. Throughout this webinar we'll refer to SSP and the SSP rebate scheme. These are two linked but different systems. When we talk about SSP, we're referring to the legal requirement for employers to pay eligible employees SSP. When we talk about the SSP rebate scheme, we're referring to the scheme that has been established in recognition of the financial burden small and medium sized employers may face as a consequence of coronavirus COVID-19. So let's start by looking at what the scheme is about. This scheme will allow small and medium sized employers to apply to Her Majesty's Revenue and Customs HMRC to recover the costs of paying coronavirus COVID-19 related SSP to their employees. This is a temporary scheme open to small and medium sized employers covering periods of coronavirus COVID-19 related sickness from the 13th of March 2020. It also covers coronavirus COVID-19 related shielding for those who've received a letter advising them to do so starting on or after the 16th of April 2020. Periods of sickness or inability to work before this date will not be covered. The government will keep under review the length of time they will keep open the support for these businesses. Employers can, however, use this scheme any time during this period. The scheme will compensate employers for costs of SSP up to a certain threshold, where an employee is incapable of work due to infection or contamination with coronavirus COVID-19 or is deemed to be incapable of work because the employee is self-isolating in accordance with guidance issued by Public Health England, NHS National Services Scotland or Public Health Wales, Public Health Agency Northern Ireland or shielding following receipt of a letter from their doctor or health authority. Before we look at the SSP rebate scheme, here's some basic information about operating SSP and some key phrases. To qualify for statutory sick pay, an employee must be classed as an employee and have done some work for you. Earn an average of at least £118 per week in the tax year 2019-20 or £120 in the tax year 2020-21. That's the lower earnings limit for Class 1 national insurance. Let you know they are unfit for work and provide evidence if you require it, such as a sick note after a period of self-certification of seven days. There are more qualifying conditions, details of which can be found in the Employer's Guide to SSP. If your employee is off sick or self-isolating because of coronavirus COVID-19 on or after the 13th of March 2020, you start paying SSP from the first qualifying day an employee is off work. If your employee is shielding, from the 16th of April, you also start paying SSP from the first qualifying day an employee is off work. They must be self-isolating for at least four days in a row. In other words, a period of incapacity for work or PIW. A period of incapacity for work or PIW is a period when an employee is unable to work due to illness for a period of four or more calendar days in a row, including non-working days. It can be more than four days in a row, but not less. When PIWs link, you should treat them as one continuous period of illness. The gap between the first day of one PIW and the last day of the previous one must be 56 days, eight weeks or less. The illnesses do not have to be the same. 
Qualifying days are the only days you must pay SSP for. They're usually the employee's normal working days. They use your contractual days as agreed between you and your employee. Once you've agreed qualifying days for each employee, note them in your SSP records. When you start paying SSP will depend on whether your employee is self-isolating because of coronavirus COVID-19 or shielding and have received a letter advising them to do so or off sick for another reason unrelated to coronavirus COVID-19. If an employee was off sick with coronavirus COVID-19 before the 13th of March, you start paying SSP from the fourth qualifying day. Also, if your employee is off sick for another reason not connected to coronavirus COVID-19 and is eligible to receive SSP, the normal qualifying criteria apply and you start paying them from the fourth qualifying day. In other words, they must serve three waiting days. Those employees who were self-isolating prior to the 13th of March 2020 because someone else in their household had symptoms do not qualify for SSP. They may however qualify for SSP from the 13th of March 2020 if the person in their household still has symptoms on that day. Employees following social distancing guidance are not eligible for SSP. This doesn't include extremely vulnerable employees who have received a letter telling them to shield by their GP or health authority. As their employer, we recommend you use your discretion when requiring notification and medical evidence for employees where they've been advised to stay at home in relation to coronavirus COVID-19 absence. According to public health advice issued by the government, this will be someone who is either unwell themselves or living with someone who is unwell. Employees who have been advised to self-isolate because of coronavirus COVID-19 can obtain an isolation note by visiting the nhs.uk website. They are not required to provide evidence so please use your discretion accordingly. This service is for people who have symptoms of coronavirus or live with someone who has symptoms of coronavirus. From the 16th of April 2020, this service is also available for people who have received a letter from their GP or health authority telling them to shield in case they are required to provide the letter as evidence. A person living with someone that is shielding is not eligible for SSP unless they themselves are sick or self-isolating in line with the guidance. You will be able to make a claim online from the 26th of May. Employers should continue to make SSP payments to those employees entitled to receive it according to the new eligibility criteria. We will update gov.uk as more information becomes available. Any employer in the UK can claim if you have fewer than 250 employees as of the 28th of February 2020 registered on your Pay As You Earn PAYE scheme with HMRC, including charities, and you must have created and started a PAYE payroll scheme on or before the 28th of February 2020. We'll be looking at how this affects connected companies and charities a little later on. As previously mentioned, the scheme will compensate employers for SSP costs paid to employees for coronavirus COVID-19 related absences that began on or after the 13th of March 2020. It will also compensate for those employees who have been notified to shield on or after the 16th of April 2020. These payments must be paid to these employees who are unable to work their usual contractual days and hours by reason of infection or contamination with coronavirus COVID-19 are deemed to be incapable of work because they are self-isolating in accordance with guidance issued, are shielding and have received a letter from their GP or health authority. 
Employees must have been on your PAYE payroll on the 28th of February 2020 and can be any type of contract, including full-time employees, part-time employees, employees on agency contracts, employees on flexible or zero-hour contracts, directors, term-time employees. The scheme also covers former employees who are entitled and have received SSP from their employer covering periods of sickness starting on or after the 13th of March 2020. Company directors may be eligible to be paid SSP depending on their employment contract. If an employee returns from abroad and they or someone in their household is displaying symptoms of COVID-19 and they are unable to work as a result, they will be entitled to receive SSP from day one subject to other eligibility criteria. Employees in education, such as classroom assistants, college lecturers, nursery workers and kitchen staff may be contracted to work outside term times. Entitlement to SSP depends on the type of contract you have with your employees. Under the SSP rebate scheme, an employer can claim back up to a maximum of two weeks SSP for each employee if that employee was unable to work for a reason relating to coronavirus COVID-19. An employer will be able to claim back SSP payments retrospectively when the new digital service becomes available for any qualifying days on or after the 13th of March 2020 or on or after the 16th of April 2020 if the employee is shielding. The maximum number of employees which an employer can claim for is the number registered on the PAYE scheme or schemes as at the 28th of February 2020. The 28th of February 2020 is the operable date for establishing the size of the employer and the eligibility for the scheme. It doesn't define the specific eligibility of each employee. There is no requirement that the employer still has under 250 employees after that operable date, or that the employee was one of those employed on the 28th of February 2020. From the 6th of April 2020, the amount of SSP increased from £94.25 per week to £95.85. As mentioned, the funding will cover up to two weeks SSP per eligible employee. This is in line with the recommended isolation period of 7 to 14 days. Employers can claim for more than one period for a single employee, but the combined claim can't exceed two weeks. After the two weeks of funding has expired, the normal SSP rules apply. If you pay more than the current rate of SSP, you can only claim the statutory amount. You cannot reclaim statutory sick pay SSP if your employee is off sick for another reason, in other words an illness that isn't related to coronavirus COVID-19. The rebate scheme will only be available once per employee. Furloughed employees retain their statutory rights, including their right to receive SSP. This means that furloughed employees who become ill must be paid at least SSP. Employers can decide whether to move these employees onto SSP or to keep them on furlough at their furloughed rate. This must be agreed with the employee. If a furloughed employee who becomes sick is moved onto SSP, employers cannot claim for the furloughed salary. Instead, they would make a claim under the SSP rebate scheme. If, however, they decide to keep the sick furloughed employee on the furlough rate, they may be eligible to claim costs via the Coronavirus Job Retention Scheme. This means that an employer can claim back from both the SSP Rebate Scheme and the Coronavirus Job Retention Scheme for the same employee, but not for the same period of time. You'll be able to make a claim online from the 26th of May. You'll need the Government Gateway user ID and password you got when you registered for Pay As You Earn online. 
If you use an agent who's authorised to do pay as you earn online for you, they'll be able to claim on your behalf. If, however, you didn't register online, you'll need to enrol for the pay as you earn online service. It won't be necessary for an employee to provide a fit note in order for you to make a claim. It will, however, be necessary for shielding employees to provide their letter as evidence in order for you to make a claim. Where two companies or charities are connected, they are also eligible to claim back SSP pay to their employees if their total combined number of employees enrolled on to pay as you earn systems were fewer than 250 on or before the 28th of February 2020. If an employer or connected employer operates more than one pay as you earn scheme, the total combined number of employees must be fewer than 250 to be eligible. A connected company is where one of the two companies has control of the other, or both are under the control of the same person or persons. A connected charity is where both charities' purposes and activities are the same or substantially similar. This means that if an employer is currently treated as a connected company or charity for the purpose of claiming the employment allowance, they will also be connected for the purposes of calculating the number of employees for the purposes of eligibility for this scheme. Employers will be required to create and maintain records for a minimum period of three years relating to each payment of SSP they wish to recover. The information you will need to record includes details of each period when an employee couldn't work, including start and end dates. A record of the reason why an employee couldn't work, provided by the employee in question. The days which were qualifying days in the period of incapacity for work. The national insurance number for the relevant employee to whom payments of SSP were originally made. HMRC do not need you to keep records of SSP paid to employees who are off sick for another reason. You can choose how you keep records of your employee's sickness absence. HMRC may need to see these records if there's a dispute over payment of SSP. There'll be more webinars and recordings coming online soon. Here's a summary of what we've covered today. The aim of the scheme, who can claim, when to start paying SSP, employees you can claim for, what you can claim, what you'll need to make a claim, connected companies or charities, and keeping records. Our full range of help and guidance can be viewed online from your mobile, tablet or PC at any time. If you have a disability, a mental health issue or don't speak English, you can find extra support on the gov.uk website. Thank you for listening. Stay safe and stay well.